Hi, and welcome to part two of this three-part series covering vena puncture and cannulation. In this video, we are going to examine the process of cannula insertion and the appropriate equipment required. An assessment of the patient must occur prior to the insertion of a cannula. Prior to beginning your assessment, you must follow hand hygiene protocol and wash your hands, minimizing the risk of no social infections occurring. During your assessment, you must check for any known allergies such as chlorhexidine, latex, lignocaine or tapes. You must also assess for any known risks associated with insertion of a cannula, such as the patient's anticoagulation status, any previous mastectomy or lymph excisions, and bruising or phlebitis, as well as any previous cannula insertion sites. The identity of the patient must be confirmed by asking them their full name and date of birth and verifying these details against both the armband and the healthcare record, also confirming the medical record number. A dedicated peripheral intravenous cannula insertion trolley will be available within each ward or department. The trolley must be used for all PIVC insertions as it provides a clean environment to transport, lay out and use all the equipment you will use to insert a cannula. Prior to laying out the equipment you will use, the trolley needs to be cleaned thoroughly, removing any dust or other environmental contamination that may be present. The equipment required to insert a cannula is a 3M starter kit, a 10ml syringe, 10ml of 0.9% sodium chloride, a drawing up needle, extension tubing and valve, the appropriately sized cannula and depending on your technique, sterile or non-sterile gloves. Hand hygiene is imperative in the prevention of no social infections and must be undertaken prior to and after direct patient contact as well as before and after any procedure. The use of an alcohol-based antimicrobial hand rub or soap and water is recommended for the cleaning of hands, including before the wearing of gloves. After hand hygiene has been attended, if the PIVC credential clinician's normal practice is to repalpate the area of skin disinfected for cannular insertion, sterile gloves must be worn to prevent recontamination of the area. If the clinician's normal practice is not to palpate, then non-sterile gloves can be worn. Clinicians should avoid touching the insertion site after decontamination with antiseptics, key sites of sterile parts of the peripheral cannula itself and other pieces of sterile equipment utilized for PIV insertion. When ready, the PIVC trolley should be used to lay out the various pieces of equipment required for inserting the cannula using the sterile plastic field as a base. Once all the equipment has been opened and prepared, the extension tubing needs to be primed with normal saline to expel any air. Vein selection depends on clinical judgment, but it is recommended to select veins distally and work proximately over time, avoiding areas such as the antecubital fossa and other flexing areas for non-emergency cannula insertion. If the selected area is soiled, then it should be cleaned with soap and water prior to proceeding with disinfection. Once the vein is selected and the area around the patient has been set up to accommodate insertion, repeat hand hygiene and select and wear the appropriate gloves after the hands have been dried. A disposable tourniquet should be applied at least 15 centimetres above where the cannula is anticipated to be inserted.
The selected area must be disinfected with a 2% chlorhexidine and 70% alcohol swab pad and allowed to dry to ensure that the disinfection process completes. Prepare the cannula by removing the safety cover. Check that the cannula is able to move off the needle by slightly moving the cannula. This ensures that the cannula is not stuck prior to inserting it into the patient. Insert the cannula into the chosen vein, observing for blood flow or flashback into the cannula hub. Once visible, hold the needle stylet still and advance the cannula forward into the vein until fully inserted and the needle stylet is safely housed in its safety device. Once successfully inserted, loosen the tourniquet to allow blood flow to resume normally. Whilst holding the needle safety device, place a piece of gauze underneath the cannula hub to assist in capturing any blood that may leak when the safety device is detached from the cannula. Obtain the extension tubing that was primed with normal saline earlier. Place digital pressure on the vein to obstruct blood flow. Disconnect the needle safety device and attach the extension tubing to the cannula hub. Flush the cannula with at least 5 mL of normal saline, observing for any reports of pain, swelling or blanching of the skin as the cannula is flushed. Clamp the extension tubing shut under pressure to ensure that there is no backflow of blood into the cannula. Once clamped, disconnect the 10 mil syringe and remove the gauze piece from underneath the cannula. While still steadying the cannula, place the sterile semi-permeable transparent dressing over the cannula to secure it in place. Place one of the two securing strips over the end of the hub to stabilize the cannula's position. Using the second strip, place over the hub while also securing the extension tubing in place so that it is not loose. In diathoretic patients, you may need to utilize specialized appropriate dressings in order for them to stick and secure the cannula. Safely dispose of the needle stylet into the sharp spin and dispose of any used equipment that is no longer required. The date and time of the cannula insertion should then be placed onto the cannula dressing, utilising the adhesive sticker available. All attempts at cannulation, successful and unsuccessful, must be documented in the patient's electronic health record, under the iView section, detailing the date and time, number of attempts and site of each attempt, the PIVC gauge size, and location of the final cannulation site. We have now reached the end of video 2 covering cannulation insertion.